clearly the, the language testing for citizenship work has a social justice element to it. Um, that is to say, it's my belief that, that as academic linguists, if we identify um, powerful discourses which are to do with both language and society and social justice or injustice, um, uh, then it's, it, it's our obligation, our responsibility to um, make that more visible than it usually is. Um, you might say that writing a paper in language assessment quarterly isn't necessarily making it visible to everybody, but, but um, uh, we try to get these messages out to, um, to government. And in fact, I, 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 I did a similar sort of conversation on live BBC television on a Sunday morning, talking about exactly the same things in terms of language testing for, for citizenship. And that was on the basis of that article. And so, so yeah, I, I think if we can get that message out there, I think it's important to do so, which isn't, which isn't to say that we're any kind of um, moral arbiters or, or um, moral police as far as these things go, but, but what we do is try to be as rigorous as we possibly can in our analysis of the evidence and come to appropriate conclusions. Um, and in, in terms of the, what, what I'd call the, the ethnographic work, the, the work where um, we um, hang around in markets and libraries and sports clubs and, and community centers and um, notice all of the um, communicative repertoires of the people concerned there, then um, <clears throat> again, I think, I, think the, I think the social justice agenda there is less explicit but equally strong because, um, well, let me let me take for for example um, the work that we've done in a, a Chinese community center in Birmingham, where um, we studied a an advice and advocacy center where um, people would come along for advice because partly because they were not very confident in their English proficiency. So they, they found it difficult to, to apply for um, welfare resources, but partly also because, well, everybody finds it difficult to, <laughs> to negotiate these huge bureaucratic and administrative, administrative processes. And so um, they needed help and they would pay a small amount of money for their half hour or hour uh, during which a, an advisor would help them to to gain access to immigration advice or um, insurance or um, education help and, and whatever it might be. Um, and so we, we recorded 79 of these sessions, audio recorded 79 of these sessions and observed them and, and wrote field notes. Um, and uh, we've written academic reports and, and articles and, and so on. And it seems to me there's, there's a clear social justice issue there because this is a very hidden space. Nobody sees the upstairs room on the left of the Chinese community center in a dusty, um, disused warehouse down there in, in Digbeth, Birmingham. And, uh, and, and so we're making this visible, but at the, at the same time we're saying, well, these advisors are really the people who are keeping the city going. You know, they are the mediators between people who are entirely um, disenfranchised when it comes to gaining access to the rights and resources to which they are entitled. Um, and they are taking on these huge bureaucracies, which are not necessarily trying to actively trying to deny people access to their rights and resources, but the the um, the systems in place prevent um, particularly people who are not proficient in English from gaining access to those resources. So 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 we we try to make that we try to make those interactions more visible. But it's clear that notwithstanding appearing on live breakfast television occasionally <laughs> once every 10 years, um, it's clear 
that um, it doesn't necessarily always make a lot of difference writing an academic paper or an academic mm. book. Mm. And so we're starting to take the work in a, in a different direction. So, so uh, for example, we've taken all of those 79 interactions in the um, advice and advocacy center and we've um, rewritten, well, um, some of them as scenes for um, theater, scenes for, uh, for play. Um, and we've also taken the interactions between some of the advice workers who, who work in that, that environment. And we've um, put them together to form a, a, a play script of 29 scenes. And um, it's, the text is, not entirely verbatim, but um, the particularly the interactions between advisors and their clients do tell the same story in the same words, but we sometimes add more rhythm, more repetition. We try to make the, the interaction slightly more lively because if we're presenting this on stage, we also have a responsibility not to bore the audience because we're trying to get this message out there we're trying to get people to say oh yeah that's important we didn't realize that was going on and so um so yeah if you're uh, to, to to answer the question about um about um the social justice dimension of um this sort of li linguistic research uh, or sociolinguistic research um i'm my feeling now is that we need to find ways of um, better engaging people with the kind of things that we're finding through doing all this research. I don't think it's really sufficient now to only talk to each other. Mm -hmm.